Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I'd just like to uh, draw the, the House's attention to a couple of international days where we celebrate uh, various matters. The first is International Day for People Living with Disability, which is on the 3rd of December, this Saturday. Mr. Speaker, this day uh, helps the community to focus on those the people who live with disability. An important role we have as a society and also as a government to ensure that we enable those people who live with disability to engage fully in, in community, but also live with dignity. Mr. Speaker, some, some years ago now, uh, the, a federal Labor government, uh, in, in cooperation with a number of state governments, introduced the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And that scheme was based on the principle was basically that uh, people living with disability would have control over the services they needed and received, and also have a level of independence. So they actually determine what they needed, when they needed it, and for the purposes they needed it. And that was a, I, I agree, that's a, a very fine principle. Sadly, obviously, in the, and it was also <coughs> a market-based system, which uh, has both its strengths and its weaknesses. There are some issues to be dealt with in terms of some market failure in the delivery of services for, for people living with disability. More of greater concern, though, Mr. Speaker, is the way the scheme was uh, underfunded by the previous federal government to the extent that there was quite uh, arbitrary cuts to various plans supporting people living with disability. And I've had a number of people in my own electorate, Mr. Speaker, come to speak with me uh, and seek advice and assistance to, to actually get funding back for their children, mainly for their children. And we've had a number of cases where we've actually had to support people uh, through the internal review processes, including helping people go through the AAT, where uh, the NDIA, uh, under pressure from the then government, uh, basically to reduce the so-called cost of the scheme, was cutting funds left, right and centre. And Mr Speaker, these cuts actually caused quite a bit of distress, not only to the families, but importantly, it actually put the development back of young children back in many years because they weren't getting the support and services they require. So it's, it's good to hear that um, uh, the former minister responsible for this in the previous government, uh, uh, federal government also, uh, the mem the, uh, Bill Shorten has come out quite clearly and said that um, you know, governments need to spend, spend what they need to spend to make sure that people live in disability get the necessary supports to live a dignified life. And that's a reassuring. Uh, Mr Speaker, one of the things which uh, we need to also be in, in tune about, and I know the, the Assistant Minister for Autism is doing a lot of great work in this field, is to ensure that um, people living with disability, and particularly young children, actually can access services. Access services. And often we, we're not aware as a community what sort of the, some of the challenges and barriers which exist. Even, for example, going into taking a child with, with uh, autism into some retail, retail outlets is quite a challenge uh, because of lighting, uh, noise, music, etc. So I was happy to, to uh, read recently and be told recently that one of the new businesses in my in Gawler, it's called Beauty and Beast Co, uh, which is a uh, basically a hair salon plus a beauty salon, uh, actually going to try to provide services for people living with disability and particularly address uh, children with, with, with autism because um, I am told sometimes it is quite challenging getting a child who has autism to get their hair cuts in, in a simple thing like getting a haircut. So I commend that new business in Gawler and they open on the 10th of December to, to reach out and provide services. And I think that's something we need to do more and more of is to help uh, small businesses get accredited so they actually are more disability friendly but also they have the information so they know what they need to do to do so. So I commend that. The other day, Mr Speaker, in the time I left, is the International Day of Volunteers on the 5th of December, uh, which is Monday. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all those volunteers in my community who do an enormous amount of work uh, to, to enrich the lives of other people in our community. And there are very, very few walks of life, Mr. Mr Speaker, that don't have a volunteer involved in some way, whether it's education, whether it's faith organisations, recreation, sport, you name it, there's a volunteer there and uh, they play an important role. They, but they are still suffering from the impact of COVID. Uh, the number of volunteers and communities has been affected by that. 
and so we need to make sure that we actually help organisations to help those volunteers. And I'd just like to acknowledge the important work in my community undertaken by the Northern Volunteering in training and recruiting volunteers for our community.